for today, Tuesday, October 9, 2001. And uh, we will start with the first item on our agenda, which is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Next, we uh, will look at adjustments to the agenda. Not seeing any, um, so we'll move on to approval of the school board uh, minutes, the meeting minutes for uh, our September regular meeting. Looks like those are fine. And um, now on to communications. There are um, a few letters in your packet. Um, that were either written to me or the school board as a whole. Um, one particular note is the letter regarding the Grammy Foundation, and once again, um, our music program and our jazz band and representatives from that um, have received an invitation to get involved with that program. Um, I think it's quite an honor that that, that is happening. Um, also, just to make a note of our enrollments overall, uh, as I reviewed them, we're, we're seeing a, a continuation of a trend um, of an increase in our, in our student population, not only from kindergarten to first, um, but from um, first to second. I think a lot of that is because of the number of students that attend either private full-day kindergartens or uh, that now are becoming K-1 schools. Uh, so that's something I think we need to, as we get into the facilities project, uh, keep in mind of. Other communications this evening? Okay, I'm going to move on to uh, comments from the public. You, uh, George, forgot the middle school and high school. Mm, I'm sorry. Did I jump right over that? I did. Um, we will go. Uh, comments from, uh, from the public. I'm not seeing any. So um, I did go out of order here. And I guess I will ask our high school representatives uh, for their report. David and Chris. Uh, well, since the last meeting, uh, we've had our homecoming, which is the first uh, large event in the school year, and it went off, went off great. Uh, all the different classes did their fundraising, uh, mostly bake sales, and I think one <laughs> class sold kielbasa, which you'll see in the David Current picture of me. <laughs> um, and also the homecoming dance, the disco dance. Yeah, the, uh, every, everything on homecoming went really great. We're about halfway through the uh, first quarter now, so it's a little bit of a benchmark, I guess. Um, we, we had the homecoming dance, too, and that went off without a hitch as well. There was like an act of terrorism about halfway through when <laughs> somebody deployed a stink bomb. But uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so uh, it all went off without a hitch, pretty much. Um, and so homecoming uh, went off pretty well. Nothing's really happened in high school. Everything's going pretty smoothly. The, uh, the patriotic swell has continued, so, um, and that's, I think there's really healthy dialogue going on about um, our military action um, and everything else that, that's transpired since the last time and just, I mean, everything that has happened in the past month or so. Okay. So. so. Uh, any questions or comments for Chris and Dave? Was the Kilbasa a successful uh, fundraiser, or? I believe they made about ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you didn't lose money. <laughs> Very successful. <laughs> uh. I think we're all set. Thank you very much. Now we have comments uh, from our middle school reps. Hello, my name is Lily Hoffman, and <coughs> I'm. I'm one of the representatives from the middle school, and some of the upcoming events for the fifth and sixth grade are the fifth graders are starting their trips to Kettle Cove and studying the tidal pools, and they also recently started with the band program. For the sixth grade, they are also taking field trips to the marsh, and they are exploring physical features of the marsh. And also our Sally Foster gift wrap sales are 
now over, and they're in the process of tallying the figures, and hopefully that's successful. If you don't already know, I'm Brianna Bowman, and I'm the other school board representative. Um, even though it's been almost a month since the events of September 11th, our school is still working to help out. Some of the things we're doing is on the dance, which is this Friday, October 12th, we're charging an extra dollar, so it's going to go from $3 to $4. The extra dollar is going to go towards the student council campaign, and what we're doing is we, the student council has decided to match all the money made in all the fundraisers throughout the school, and that will be donated to the Red Cross as well. And other student council news is just that the jacket sales are going to start early this year, so they can hopefully be in by Christmas, so we can give them as Christmas presents. And that's it. Okay. Any questions for Lily or Brianna? Very good job. You need to be pros at this already. We're going to move on now to um, ordinarily we would have recognition, but I, I don't think that we have anything on the agenda for this evening. So on to the superintendent's report. It's a few items uh, that you might be interested in the, um, regarding the Education Foundation. The group is holding uh, a meeting on October 16th, and their major purpose right now is to take a look at uh, the beginning of um, a campaign in, in looking at um, creating this endowment fund. The purpose right now is to get some startup funds so that the group can begin to look at whether they, they need to um, bring in some professional assistance regarding fundraising, uh, whether this is something that they need to do on, on their own, um, and also the idea of a feasibility study regarding um, the whole issue of creating a foundation in Cape Elizabeth. Future direction planning, the buildings have completed their work on creating their own core values or uh, beliefs in action. Um, if you remember, um, our goal was, uh, now that we have created a district mission, vision, and belief statements, um, each building was to, then, was to then take a look at that information and tie what they're doing in their buildings or how do, how do those beliefs look in their buildings. And that work was recently completing dur during one of the um, late arrival days. <clears throat> Another item of interest um, is regarding sabbatical leaves. We've had um, two requests for a semester sabbatical and one request to postpone a sabbatical that was scheduled for this year until, until next year. Um, there was a discussion at the Finance Committee regarding the sabbaticals and usually look at what the cost, projected cost of those sabbaticals would be. Um, compared to this year's budget and to what these sabbaticals would cost, um, these sabbaticals do not go beyond what we budgeted in this present year's budget. And even if we do uh, approve the one that has been postponed, uh, it would still be under the amount that we spent this year for sabbaticals. Um, there was a consensus uh, from the school board that we would make the attempt to include that money in this year's budget, which we are required to notify those people who have um, requested sabbaticals by November 1st, and we'll be able to do that. And lastly, um, you'll hear some comments tonight about MEA results. What I included in your packet was just a portion of those results. Those are the, the pieces that, that give you the information about where we stand um, compared to where we were over the last several years. There is more detailed information available if you'd, if you'd like to see that, um, but that gives you kind of a snapshot as to where we are right now uh, regarding ME, MEA results, and I'm sure the principals um, We'll comment a bit, and what's important to us is how do we use those results and how does that inform our practice in our schools. Okay, good. Thanks, Tom. Um, and we will move on uh, to the principal's reports, uh, starting first, uh, Tom at Pond Cove. Good evening. As, as Tom mentioned, I just want to take a few minutes to walk you through the results with the uh, report we got a couple of weeks ago. We now have reports back for all seven of the components of the MEA from uh, 2000 and 2001. You probably remember that it was three years ago when the MEA reformatted itself to go from a scaled score to um, more performance-based, uh, directly linked to the learning results. So we have three years' worth of data on that. 
of the ones that you got in your packet, um, the trend for Pond Cove, math, science, technology, social studies, visual performing arts, the trend is up. I'm pleased to say we're getting near that 540 line. The, the, the 540 means that half or more of the kids are meeting or exceeding the standards. Um, it's, I see particularly significant growth in science and technology. We have a long way to go there. But if you look at the report and see that the state results are, are flat and ours are going up, I think that's a good sign. In addition to the uh, school uh, report, we get one number from that. If you flip a little bit, for example, on page four, uh, the good sign there is it's broken down about how many kids uh, don't meet the standards, how many kids partially meet, how many meet, and how many exceed. In math, for example, over half of Pond Cove students meet the standards, and very few do not meet them. Let me go on to science and technology on page six. As I said, we have a long way to go. When we first started this in 98-99, we had 5% uh, of the kids meeting the standards. It's now up to 11, and the state results are flat. And we've gone from 18% of the kids not meeting the standards, at all, standards in science and uh, technology at all to only seven. And you'll find the same trend in uh, social studies. What I attribute this to, in, uh, in math, we have a K through 12 curriculum, and we know what we're doing. In science, it's very close to that. So when um, teachers get these results, they go back, look at the items to see how many kids missed a lot of them, look at the item itself to see whether it was a good, bad, or indifferent question, and then ask themselves, are we teaching this? How well are we teaching it? Um, I was just going to say something else. So the, the trend is, is generally upward in all of those. When I look back at the, the four we did in December, um, the strongest one is in reading. You can just, I'll just flash the graph at you there. Three quarters or more of the students at Pond Cove are meeting or exceeding the standards, and it's way, way above the, uh, the state average. The one in writing is not as good. Um, few of the kids are actually meeting the standards in writing. And that's one of the reasons we've chosen writing as a focus area this year, to see whether it's just as prompt or whether, uh, whether we're teaching and how well we're teaching the individual skills that go, up, uh, go into making a good writer. So uh, back to the, the part about uh, improving the scores. In social studies, we do not have a commercial curriculum that we, we do for K through four, but grade levels have each identified what they're doing for their, their homemade units and link them back to the learning results to see what kind of matches there. So if we weren't teaching civics, for example, you'll notice that a lot of you have been invited to school lately to see, uh, and that's part of a unit that grade three developed in grade four, two, and one have done the same thing to meet those. So the, I'd say there's a really positive trend, and uh, when I see more and more kids moving up, um, I'm really happy to see them. Have I completely baffled you with all this? <laughs> it makes sense, and I, I, I have to say that I'm not up here to ap apologize for any of the defects in the MEA. I think they're known, known quite well, but when you look back three years, it's the same, it's a flawed instrument, but every, every fourth grader in the state is taking it, so the, the data is useful at Pond Cove. Any questions or comments? Tom, you mentioned 75% of our students are reading at or above grade level. Meeting the standards, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. The other 25%, are we seeing that replicated in the classroom, or are these the, kids the, doing the, the better in the classroom? The good news is that everybody is making progress, right? So when I look down at the number of students not meeting the standards, it's, it's approaching zero in all this, and that's really good news. That, that was the real trend in science, too. We have very few kids at the bottom, say, which means I, I think I'd be prepared for major progress in that, just the way reading is. Terrific. Yep. Um, Jim. You pointed out that the MEAs are pointing out general areas where we can improve, and I think that makes a great deal of sense. I know one of the concerns about the MEA uh, was that districts and, and schools and teachers would teach to the test. Uh, do you see that as a concern for our district? Maybe the other teachers, uh, the other principals, excuse me, could could address that when they talk about their schools? We, we, we teach the test in that there, there's a certain amount of test-taking savvy that goes into this. Um, we wondered a couple of years ago 
why some fourth graders were missing items that they seemed to know. And uh, what we discovered was they weren't reading the directions. So, so part of that was a little bit of, of uh, test taking instruction. I think we, we teach the test at Pond Cove if it's related to learning results. Um, so there's that test taking savvy plus is, is this a good thing to be teaching if it's related to learning results. So yeah, in many ways we do teach the test. Thank you. Sure. All set? I think we are. All right. And that's the focus of that's your report. It's, yeah. You can tell I'm just sort of stunned and waiting for the rest of the stuff. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. I don't want to get the little buzzer. Thank you. Thank I, you so I, much I, for being <laughs> so focused. We appreciate it, Tom. I'm not even ready to move on yet. OK, there we go. <laughs> um, principal's reports. OK, high school, Jeff. I think that Tom gave his other three minutes to me. I think that's what he intended by <laughs> silence. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about MEA results as well, understanding that they need to be taken with a grain of salt. Uh, the tests are very, very imperfect. Um, and at this point, I haven't been able to find, because I don't think it's been published yet, comparative data for other specific schools. Um, so the only data that we have are the ones that are on the sheets that I think the board has, which sort of look at the state as a whole, which is in some ways not the most useful comparison that, that, that we could make, but it's what we have. Um, here's how we did, and I haven't gone back to English and writing and reading. Uh, I've only done the ones that are the results of the March, the spring test um, session. Uh, in mathematics, our school average was 538, um, compares to a state average of 528 um, on an 80 point scale between 501 and 580, which is really the scale that's there. The five is sort of a placekeeper that doesn't mean much of anything. Um, so we beat the state average by 10 points. Um, in the state as a whole, there were approximately 22%, I think, of the kids who met the learning standards. And at the high school, there were, it, again, we don't have the precise numbers, but it looks as I read the bar graph like it's exactly 50% who meet the learning standards in math. Um, about 15% of students did not meet uh, the learning standards at the high school, which compares to a state figure of about 40%, so a little over twice that figure. Um, in science and technology, our school average score was 534 compared to a state average of 527. Um, approximately 15% of our students met the learning standards in science and technology um, compared to the state average of about 7%. Um, the largest majority of students in science statewide fall into the category of partially meets the standards, and that's true at the high school as well. Um, our percentage in the does not meet category in science is lower than the states, but it's the highest of any of our core area results. I think it's about 20% as I read that bar graph. Um, our social studies average was 539 compared to a state average of 530. Um, just under 50% of our students met the standards in social studies according to the MEA results. Um, but interestingly, we had the smallest number of students um, failing to meet the standards in social studies than in any other area. And visual and performing arts scores, you can see, were about five, five points over the state average. Um, it's, MEA data is a sort of a thin read upon which to base any conclusions. They really raise questions, I think. I'm not sure they really provide any answers. I've asked the department chairs to provide to me some of their own analysis about what the results suggest to them. But because we just got the results, I really don't have that feedback from department heads at this point. But I did want to just highlight a couple of questions that occur to me as a result of looking at the MEA results. Um, and the first one is that even though CAPE students um, continue to perform at or near the very top of the state um, in terms of the MEA results, there has been a slight downward trend <coughs> in math and science over the last three years, which is interesting. Um, and I don't know what the cause of that is, uh, but I have some questions that I think they're, they're thinking about. Um, and the question that I have in science in particular is whether or not the downward trend results in any way, is connected in any way to the lack of additional lab time in science as compared to other classes. Um, and that conclusion may or may not be supported by the fact that we beat the state by a larger number of points in the area of content in science than we did in the area of process, which relates to scientific reasoning and that kind of thing. 
Um, but I hasten to say that that's only a working hypothesis. I don't know if, and the, 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 the snapshot that the MEA takes, the snapshot of questions that it has is so narrow, and the area of science is so broad that it could also be the result of just what the particular questions were in a particular year. And I have no working hypothesis in math at all, uh, unless there was just some kind of snapshot issue or just a demogra demographic um, fluke of some sort. Um, second, there is, there, is, there is a question that, that, that the entire state is grappling with, science teachers across the state are grappling with, which is how do you get the science kids to meet the learning standards, or are the science standards completely unrealistic? At the high school, um, if you listen to most science teachers across the state, what I've heard in all the schools that I've been at is that it's almost impossible to meet the learning standards in the time that's available in high school. Um, but Notwithstanding that, we have begun a discussion within the high school, we have really continued a discussion about what's the best way to organize the curriculum um, in science um, to come as close as we can to meet the learning standards. Um, a third question, which kind of echoes your question, Kevin, a little bit about the kids who don't meet the standards, it seems to me, is how do we address the needs of what I would call the persistent 8 to 20 percent, depending on which subject area you're talking about, of the students who do not meet the standards. Um, this would appear to be a group, if you give any credence to the scores whatsoever, that may be leaving the high school without some basic core skills, um, and that's a real concern. It's not a unique concern to the capabilities of high school by any means, uh, but the question that occurs to me around that issue that we've begun to talk about a little bit, and I think Pete and Dwight were talking about last year as well, is is part of the solution some kind of an alternative program that we haven't, haven't quite developed yet? I mean, is there something that can sort of reach the group of students who really struggles with um, a high school, traditional high school climate, which we have. So those are kind of the results. Those are my questions. Um, and I just wanted to, uh, on a completely unrelated note, that the school had just completed its homecoming weekend, as David and Chris suggested. All our teams have a winning records with the exception of football. But I want to say on behalf of football, I've watched two games. And the football team is having a great growth year uh, when you consider the size of the squad and the injury situation that they're suffering through, which has a disproportionate impact because of the size of the squad. And I also have to say that the crowds at the football games have been large and unbelievably spirited. Um, it's really kind of fun to see. And in part, that's prompted by the great supportive work of the barbecue team, of which I believe Chris and David are both members. Um, it's great to watch the kids fight against squads that are much larger than them in terms of squad size and in terms of physical poundage, player for player. Um, all of our teams and coaches deserve tremendous congratulations for the work that they've done. That's my report. Questions for Jeff? Thank you very much. You're we'll move on to the middle school. Nancy. I know you'll be really excited to hear about the Emmy results at the middle school. Um, a lot of what Tom and Jeff have said is also true for us. Looking at our most recent um, ones that you have, we have um, met the standards as a school in all the categories except for science. And I think we have a little bit of what Jeff was talking about in middle school science as well. Um, what we do with these, what do these mean to us, we also go, just as they explained that your teachers will go, to this flip part here where it talks about the different types of things we were doing. We haven't had a chance to do an item analysis of a lot of these yet, but one of the speculations we have is that our students are falling down in science when they have to tell why they know that something is the right answer or why they're coming to the conclusion or the choice that they are. Historically, our students have answered those questions. They, they answer the questions, but they do it in a very general kind of way. In our classroom teaching when they do that, we would usually guide them. If I was, someone was asking me a question and it wasn't quite complete, they might say, Nancy, do you know, what else might you know? Is there anything more that you want to add? When students that are in a testing situation, they don't have that cue. And as I've talked to some other um, middle school principals, some of them suffer from the fact that some students don't answer the questions. We don't have that particular problem. What we may have, and what we're speculating, once again, that we have, is that our students aren't answering them thoroughly. That's one variable that's on the table. Another variable that's on the table in science, um, because for the past few years, we've hovered right around the same score in science, as you can see, um, is that issue of coverage. Um, do we cover all of those things? And are they being tested on something that actually in our curriculum we covered more thoroughly in grade five? 
because one of the things we tried to do when we coordinated our science work several years ago is to make sure we don't all cover the same thing repeatedly over and over and do some things so thoroughly that we know everything about it and some things we've never heard of. Um, and so those are a couple of t kinds of things and, and things that we'll be looking at as we look at these results. Um, once again, we use the MEAs to really inform us more of a practice of our curriculum improvements, not individual student scores, because these students have already moved on to the high school. Jim, your question about do we teach to the test, in the middle school, I would say I, I don't believe so. What we have tried to do and it change in our teaching is that tactic I spoke to before about getting students to more on their own internally make sure an answer is more complete. Obviously, we don't think we've reached that, that point yet, but it's still a goal for us to work towards. So how it helps inform us is maybe do we give them an opportunity to see situations where they have to construct their response, write the answer, not pick it from a group of choices, but really write the answer and tell what they learn. Also, are we giving them enough opportunities to really tell us what you know and how you know that? That whole metacognition, reflective learning, you hear about it a lot. But it's really, it's really we're simply asking them, that's an interesting answer. And, Specifically, why do you think that? What in what you've just read or studied specifically would lead you to that conclusion? Um, and obviously, we need to do some more work with that Thank you. kind of thing. Adolescents are really pretty good at. Well, I wrote something down. You know, I'm finished, <laughs> and um, really to get them to look at it a little bit more carefully, kind of thing. And just a, another two quick notes. Um, the other thing that I did, we, and I had I talked with Andy Strout for this information. Of course, I left it on my desk. For the fourth year in a row, we have been notified that we are the state champions in the President's Physical Challenge exercise. And Andy sat down with me and even told me the whole four areas that we compete in, and I only remember two of them, running and sit-ups. And I apologize to Andy because he gave me much more information than that, and I left it on the desk, but maybe I'll share that with you in November, and we can pretend that it's new news. So apologies to that, but also congratulations to all of our students who helped us um, do that. And in an age when students of middle school age are often accused of being really good couch potatoes, I think um, this is a good um, thing for them to be recognized for that actually a number of our students do quite well in those activities. Another thing that our students are really quite excited about is <coughs> we have really gotten into this adopt a service person program. And on one of our boards, as you walk down our hall, we're going to have a section where we have pictures. And it's been wonderful because parents have been sending us pictures of their sons and daughters in their service uniform, but also as they would have appeared in school. So um, for our students, it's sort of like, oh, that's when they looked like me. And this is who they became as an adult um, and with their addresses. And I know um, Kevin's son visited our school on Friday, which was wonderful because coincidentally, he came at the same time that our advisory groups were meeting. And one of our advisory groups had adopted Brendan. And um, they were so excited to see him. Um, it was as good as seeing any of our current or their current musical pop groups or anything like that. <laughs> and the thing that was really exciting about it is that you need to know is this is an eighth grade advisory group. And if they were so excited to see a fellow citizen in uniform, and, and they really were proud to meet this young man, um, if our eighth graders are that excited, you can only imagine how excited our fifth graders are. So um, that seems to be a good match for our students and something they feel that they can do and they're really excited about doing that. Um, so far we have Issa Lomat McNear's information as well too. And um, Doug Ginn, has an, he's one of our eighth graders and he has an older brother who's in the Marines. So those are a couple that we have and we hope to get more because it, it does seem to be a match with our students. That's great. Thank you. Any questions for Nancy? Just a quick comment, Nancy. I'm, I'm sure you'll convey to your entire student body my son's appreciation for his welcome. He was, uh, feeling very good about being an American. Great, well I'm glad we could be a part of that because I know they're gonna be excited with his notes and with the bear that he sent them, so that'll be great. Thank you. Thanks, Nancy. That's Banshee Bear, by the way. Banshee, okay, that. <laughs> okay, we're gonna move on to committee reports and the first is uh, from this evening's finance subcommittee meeting. We have a very easy report for you tonight. Um, as Tom was kind enough to cover the, the most important part, which was that the consensus of the board is to 
uh, put aside sufficient funds for uh, sabbaticals in keeping with our desire to uh, promote staff development and professional development throughout the schools. Um, other than that, it was typical uh, homework. We did not get to review the annual financial report. That is not back yet, and I suspect that we'll be doing that next month. Other than that, um, it was simply a matter of signing warrants, uh, any questions which there were none on the appropriation report. There will also be a, uh, a forum on equitable tax policy and school funding, which I plan on attending, and hopefully uh, someone else will be able to attend as well. And that is it for finance. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Um, the report from the policy subcommittee, Jennifer. Policy Subcommittee met last Wednesday and we went over some of the work uh, done to date uh, by the newly formed Athletic Task Force. Um, our next meeting is November 7th at 12 o'clock in the Joint Conference Room. Okay, thank you. And um, the Building Committee, Marie. Um, I have a list tonight of uh, 19 people who have volunteered to be on the building project committee that I need to submit to everyone for your approval to um, form this committee. Um, and they are as follows. Myself, um, who will be chairing the committee, and Elaine Maloney um, from the school board, a town council member, Mary Ann Lynch, uh, Tom Priscilla, administrators, uh, Jeff Shedd, Nancy Hutton, Tom Eismeyer, and Pauline Portria. Uh, community representatives, Mary Delano, James Hubner, and Ron Hodge. Uh, kindergarten teachers, Catherine Cornell and Linda Paul. High school teachers, Michael Efren and Scott Shea. The athletic director, Keith Weatherby. And um, three parents, Sue Pierce, Diane Nicholson, and Peter Rich and both Sue and Diane uh, were previously on the Facilities Committee. Um, so those 19 people, um, I would hope to be approved for this um, project committee. And our first meeting will be tomorrow evening um, at 7 o'clock. Okay. So um, this is something that requires formal action on the part of the board. So why don't you present that as a, as a motion? Sure. Um, I'd like to make a motion that the 19 people that I have just listed would be approved for the building renovation project committee. Okay. Um, is there a second on that motion? Jim, thanks. Questions or comments on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? It's 7 0. So um, you. you can hold that meeting tomorrow night, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else to report out um, from the building committee? Uh, no, that's it. Okay, thanks. We're now going to move on to unfinished business. Um, and this, uh, in your packets, there are a couple of letters um, uh, with regard to the proposed exchange trips uh, to France and to Costa Rica. And um, we're going to have presentations by. Well, yes, David both and Mark, Mark, David, and Mark are here to answer any questions. If you remember um, last spring, they came with an initial request, um, and this is the they're coming back to the board. Uh, you received the, more information in your packet, and um, I guess any of the questions that the board might have or any other information besides what's in your packet, they'd be willing to share with you. Okay. Let me speak first. Um, I appear for you, before you tonight and regretfully you will have to take the French trip off the table. Um, the school I wanted to host with has been able to come up with the quorum needed for us to, to follow through on the trip this year. Mm. Um, it's just how it happens. Sometimes you have enough students and sometimes you don't have enough students. Wow. So this year we will not be able to go through with our trip to France, but we're hoping that we'll have enough students to be able to do it next year. Mm -hmm. um, I had not heavily advertised uh, our trip. I had put a piece in the newspaper this summer. I did have some posters up around the school, mm -hmm. but I had not gone through with um, uh, a lot of organizational work because I wanted to make sure I did have a, a school to work with, and so I don't think we have too many people who are disappointed out there. I, only had a few students who would come up with me. 
So just now it'll just be a matter of letting the students know that um, <coughs> just like the Red Sox, we're hoping for next year. <laughs> uh, well, unlike the Red Sox, um, <laughs> I've got quite a few students that still want to go to Costa Rica. I know there's a lot of trepidation over travel and so forth, but like many people have said, we can't just stop, we need to move on plan ahead and continue ahead. Um, I have a school in Costa Rica right now that's confirmed. They have 16 students and two teachers that want to come up here. I don't want to go down there with 16 kids, so I've set a limit at 12 um, for myself to take 12 kids down. And I'm, I've told the kids that I'm waiting for a school board approval in order to begin a selection process because the list that I have, at least for the kids that signed up for the initial meeting this year, um, is a lot more than 12. Um, so I've got a selection process. The group I'm working with is wonderful. They actually have forms for selection processes that are really nice things that the kids can do, essays and so forth. And, and in that process, of course, seniors will be considered the upper level classes and we'll work from there. And this school sounds like a very good school. Um, it's a school that's had a tradition of, I think, seven years with an exchange program with a school in Illinois. And uh, of course, the teacher that was doing that exchange, she wasn't able to do the exchange anymore, and the school was just sort of sitting there. Um, and it's a really nice package. I also, concerning the recent events coming up, I got a letter from the organization that said that they would, on September the 24th, uh, for those schools that enroll on the program this fall, should we cancel uh, later in the year, you'll receive a complete refund of all fees paid. So, I, you know, I have that in writing in case anything escalates or they need to cancel any of those programs. Um, as it's set right now, the uh, Costa Rican kids, for some reason, they get out of school in December and they go back in February. So January is the only time they can come. And I really try to avoid that. I know we have midterms in January, um, but that's the only time they can come. And um, so during that first week, I plan on having a lot of activities they can go to in the community and things that so our kids can have the time to study and so forth and not have the you know the pressure on to have to host somebody every single day on the other hand it's not a full school day either um, and a lot of kids some kids do projects and then our kids would go down there in April on both sides of the April vacation so the Costa Rican kids January second week in January up to the end and then our kids would go down there in April and I figure by April we should know a little bit more about what's going on internationally too by the time our kids would need to travel. Plus we would need to find four host families here. Um, since I'm only taking 12, it can't be completely reciprocal. And I'll stop talking now if you have any questions. Yeah. Do they know what the weather's likely to be here in January? They have no concept. They see pictures. <laughs> I just, when I read Would your you thing, I thought, oh my gosh, they're going to be here. No boots, no coats. Oh, no, we'll, we'll warn them way ahead of time. And, you know, we'll, we'll plan for some things, too. It is only 16 kids, and uh, Goodwill's not a long way <laughs> Mark, you had talked about the group um, is something about the group that is uh, helping you coordinate or whatever. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, they, this is uh, pull up their official name. It's a long one. Council Exchanges, uh, Council on International Ex Educational Exchange, which is the same group that David used okay. last year. Um, they used to be associated with the National Association of Secondary School Principals, and then they sort of broke off. And they, they've had a 47-year tradition of carrying on these exchanges um, through all kinds of different things. And the, right now, you know, they're coordinating a lot of things even in, in the events that are going on. Um, let me just get clarification because um, the names sound uh, the same. Um, David, in the uh, brief that you put together, it, it talked about the um, Council exchanges from the Council on International Educational Exchange is, yes. is the same thing. Yes. So this is the, an organization that's also endorsed by the National Association of Secondary School Principals. Yes, it's one of the organizations that, that, that they do endorse for um, exchange programs. Okay. Um, 
questions, other questions or comments? Just a quick one. Did they give you a deadline for cancellation, a specific deadline for cancellation? I don't No, they didn't give me a deadline for cancellation. I just might suggest making a determination on that so you can plan adequately. There's not a lot of money they want up front right, right. away, um, which is good. And actually, it really, um, no serious money really goes to them, I think, in January. So uh, there's a $50 non-refundable for an initial fee. And then we have, there's another 300 but that's not until January. And then right. the bulk starts to hit after January. Okay. Okay. Other questions or comments? Um, at this, um, initially, or, or a little while back, we had given you um, a tentative uh, approval to move ahead with the planning. And so now it's up to the board and it will uh, be put in front of the board um, to uh, basically approve um, the trip. And, um, and I, I suspect that the motion will include sort of a contingency that we would review the, the final um, the details, the lists, and so on as, as those things um, move ahead. Um, is that what your understanding is, Mark, of tonight? That's fine with me. Okay. Absolutely. And that's how we did it with you, David, right? Um, I think you gave me approval and then I just went. I'm not sure. <laughs> we I'm we not didn't make sure you come back it. again? Well, you I came back. Came back. You did come back and yes. with the kids and they gave a presentation, I think. Yes, we came back. Okay. But I did. But there wasn't, it wasn't a con there wasn't a contingency that we would see. I thought we saw the final list and so on of everyone I who was going. No. We didn't? No. I think it, you, you gave me the green light and I went and when I came back, I, I brought the kids before you and they gave you a report. Okay. Um, I knew there was a contingency there, so we'll, we'll build some kind of contingency and I suspect. Um, I'm not the one who's going to make the motion, but I just sort of, Jeff. Um, I think uh, that Nancy Murphy is on the trip to France as well. Um, and I thought that she was, I thought that her trip was going to be part of this as well. Uh, her, she was already approved. The diff the, there's a difference in a type of trip. These trips are, are exchanges. Nancy's trip is Nancy is taking a group of students. The only approval she would need is to mi if if they do indeed miss any school, that they can miss school. But hers is a kind of like a private, a private trip where this is actually a school curriculum kind of related because it's an exchange, which is the two different type, types of trips. I thought that at that meeting, we have to go back and look at the minutes. I thought that her missing school was approved. It was. Yes. It, but the it trip was. itself is a is a private trip, and all um, right. totally unassociated with the school. Right. This is a school. And her her appearance before the board was to have approval to miss a day, a day of right. school or two to facilitate this trip, and I think it was approved. This is this is different in that what the board is approving is a school sponsored activity, which essentially extends all of our coverage um, that the school would have. Um, to, to and and essentially is the schools um, assuming liability responsibility some level of liability responsibility for this trip so it is different as well we're also approving the missing of, of regular regularly scheduled school time for the participants okay. George, um, given the political climate is that anything we would want to run by? Our attorneys for any waivers or anything. I mean, I'm just throwing I, that out there. I don't know. Let's. I don't want to hold up the trip. I mean, I think it's a great right opportunity, but um, I don't know. I, I think that um, I, I guess I was starting to feel like I was uh, playing the role of Mother Hen again. Um, <laughs> but I, you know, sort of saying, okay, well, uh, you can do it, but. You know, just come back and tell us who's going and who, you know when you're going and exactly. You know, some of this stuff is, um, some of it was, um, you know, a little, uh, a, a little uh, uncertain still. I think in terms of what was presented here. And um, let's do this. We'll we'll take the motion. There is a a piece of formal action where the board can sort of um, banty this about and and uh, discuss it, and then we'll and we'll go from there and see if we have to modify the motion. So what I need is Kevin. I move that we approve the exchange trip to Costa Rica 
contingent upon the State Department's best advice immediately prior to the trip mm. and the opinion of our House Counsel. Um, second on that motion, Susan. Um, dis discussion or comments? Essentially, the contingency is um, that Kevin is saying is uh, based on um, the State, State Department's advisory around travel um, and as well that we would uh, want to have uh, the school council take a look at this. Um, now, do we have the council look at the details of the last trip? I'm no, just curious. Uh, George, no, we never did. But this is, I think we're in a unique situation here. Um, and quite frankly, I would expect to be second guessed um, over and over and over again. So I, I, I think it's just prudent to get the opinion on, under these circumstances. And I would also recommend that we get an opinion on Nancy's trip as well. Although it's sort of divorced from uh, a school function, you know, we are still talking about some very difficult times, international times. Uh, and I would just, uh, I personally would feel more comfortable um, having our attorney take, take a quick look at both, both issues both the Italy and uh, the other thing, and, and if necessary, obtaining uh, liability waivers on the on the trip to Italy. Based and on the, the opinion of counsel. Right. Okay. Also, the uh, I can uh, talk to counsel exchanges and get their liability package for you and present mm -hmm. that to you too, or send it to the superintendent. Yeah, normally, I, under, under normal circumstances, I wouldn't think twice about this. Sure. Mm -hmm. But. Um, I, I guess I have no choice because I spend about uh, 23 hours a day in front of CNN or uh, or Fox trying to figure out what's going on next, and it's got me a little worried. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, just as a point of correction, uh, Nancy's trip is to London and Paris. Two years, uh, last year was to Italy. Okay, so well, hasn't the, I think the Taliban has declared war against one of those places. <laughs> <coughs> um, other other comments or um, further discussion on this? I don't, th I, I know more have anything to say. Um, I don't think it's a bad idea to have uh, council look at this um, in term, just in terms of, um, it's, it's just a, an appropriate thing to do. And I, um, if someone had asked me whether or not that had happened last time we did this, because we were, we were really starting up these exchanges um, more recently. They had happened a while back and then there was a bit of a, a gap and a void and um, it, it's probably, um, just good business sense anyway for us to, to um, have our school council uh, take a look at it, just make sure that all the I's are, are dotted and T's crossed and so on. Um, but I think that what we, we're, we're essentially doing is approving the trip. And um, the con contingent uh, that we held David to was that, uh, or the contingency that we held David to was um, that they would come back and report to us. Because I think that in order to b build momentum and support around these, it's very important that the board, the board sort of steps out there, does the approval, and then we, we never hear, if everything goes great, we never really hear about it. So we, we'd really like to hear about it and hear some experience from the uh, students who participate, so. I will be more than happy to come to that. Okay, so we'll, we'll just modify that motion to include that. I would modify my motion to include a contingency for a post-trip report to the board. That would be great. Um, any other comments or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Okay, thank, thank you very much. And it, it is uh, disappointing, David, to um, to get the news and not be able to follow through, but but uh, next year is another opportunity, hopefully. Thanks. That's right, that was Nancy's last trip when she went to Italy. Right. Um, okay, we're gonna move on to new business, and uh, there are some policies for first reading, and this is the time that when new policies are presented, uh, this is the t time to discuss them. Um, they've been in the packets, or they are in your packets uh, that you received, and so um, I'll let Jennifer present these. Um, our attorneys have suggested some changes in the text of some of the spe our special ed policies. Um, 
The policies are IHBAB students' educational records policy, IHBAB-R procedures for students' educational records policy, IHBABA notification of rights under FERPA. And the changes are evident in your Okay, and they're all pretty extensive, so it's not possible to really read these into um, the record of the meeting. Oh, come on. Um, are you volunteering, Jim? <laughs> Jim, might Jim might want to read the first one. Well, well I'll take a brief um, <laughs> recess. recess while he does that. <laughs> um, uh, Jen, could you just explain what FERPA is? <laughs> it's the Family Education Rights and Privacy Act. Very good. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> okay, um, does anyone have any... Uh, if you'd like further, I mean, Claire um, um, had a lot to do with, 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 with this work, and um, I don't know, Claire, I don't want to put you on the spot. Is there anything you wanted to comment about any of these policies? Claire, basically, you're endorsing all the changes? Yes, I am. Um, I think that we can um, take a look at these. Uh, if there are any other questions, certainly uh, Claire might be a good resource, um, or Jen, uh, as chair of the policy subcommittee. Um, any, anything more at this time? Otherwise, we're going to move on. And next meeting, we will, this, these will come up for a second reading and, basic, and approval. We're going to move on to the uh, uh, superintendent's recommendation to co-curricular fee positions. You have in your packet a memo um, with a number of co-curricular fee positions um, at uh, the middle school, on Cove, and system-wide positions, which um, I would like to recommend that the, the board accept. Okay. Kevin? I move that we accept the superintendent superintendent's recommendation for co-curricular positions as enumerated in his memos to the board. Okay, thank you. Second, Susan, um, any comments or questions? Yes, Elaine. Thank you. Um, I just had some questions about the drama positions. Um, are these in addition to what we had last year? No, it's not. It, what was approved through the budget process was 300 hours for our drama position. And so what we have done, um, Steve Price and I worked on this thinking, what specifically would he need help on and what kind of honorarium can we give people, including Steve as an honorarium for that. And so we stayed with the 300 hours and just delineated out some jobs that we, which we think will make his job clearer and also make the jobs of these other people much clearer. So it's just taking it and dividing it out differently. So he's getting more assistance. He is getting more official assistance and less money, yes. <laughs> Great, thank you. <laughs> and he's, he said that would be okay. Okay. His wife had a different comment, but Steve thought it would be okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Seven zero. Move on to the superintendent's recommendations to athletic fee positions for winter. Uh, the following individuals are um, recommended for um, athletic fee positions at the high school. Jim Ray, varsity boys basketball. Jerry McQuinney, JV boys basketball. Creed Ray, freshman boys basketball. Tammy Loring, varsity girls basketball. Kim Rovzar, JV girls basketball. Doug Worthley, head coach indoor track. Terry Curtis, Varsity Swimming, Ben Raymond, Assistant Swimming, Paul Hathaway, Diving Coach, Steve Ouellette, Ice Hockey, Kurt Brown, Assistant Ice Hockey, Fern Cloutier, Assistant Ice Hockey, John and Ann Upton in Nordic Skiing. Uh, and returning middle school coaches, 
John Casey, eighth grade boys basketball, Chris Turner, seventh grade boys basketball, and Wayne Bridgman, seventh and eighth grade boys basketball B team. Okay, um, I need a motion. Kevin? I move that we accept the superintendent's uh, nominees for, uh, for coaching positions. Okay, a second. Elaine, thanks. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7 0. Now, uh, and how fortunate we are to have all of those um, great coaches that for four, five, seven years are, are returning back again. Um, consideration uh, of Slate to serve on the Building and Renovation Project Committee, I think that we've taken Very care good. of that, Marie, in your earlier piece. So before we um, have a motion to adjourn this evening's meeting, I do want to give some dates to remember. Uh, the building committee meeting will be happening on uh, Wednesday, October 10th, which is tomorrow, 7 p.m., at the William Jordan Conference Room. Um, there will be a school board workshop meeting as we begin to identify and set budget priorities for 2002-2003. That will be Tuesday, October 23rd, uh, two weeks from tonight, uh, 7 p.m. at the high school library. Uh, as Jennifer said earlier, the policy subcommittee meeting will happen on Wednesday, November 7th um, at noontime in the William Jordan Conference Room. The finance subcommittee meeting will be happening again on November 13th at 6.30 p.m. in the Jordan Conference Room, followed by the regular school board uh, meeting, our regular business meeting at 7.30 p.m. here in the uh, council chambers. Um, I guess right now I'm looking for a motion to adjourn our meeting. Jim. I would move that we adjourn our meeting. Kevin second, and all those in favor? 7-0. Hope everyone has a wonderful night. Thank you.